his books said, uh, you know, a lot of people didn't come out there. I said, if it's one person that come out tonight, we're going to give some praise for what God has done um, for me and my family. Many, many years ago, um, you know, growing up as a young youth, growing up in the Seventh-day Adventist Church, and my father found the, the, the movement of Rastafarianism. I tell people that Rastafarianism is not a religion. It is a we have said liberation movement with a spiritual nucleus. Does that make sense? Yeah. yeah. But the foundation of it is Christianity. A lot of people look at me and say, then why are you going to talk about Christ? And then I said the foundation of Rastafarianism is Christianity. If you didn't know. That's why education is so important. Because in the Bible it says, many shall have the zeal but not the power to the knowledge. So I thank God that when my father told me, he said, why not school? Education is important. Translation, I'm sorry, I went to Jamaican there for a minute. It means boy, get up and go to school. It's the English translation. So I always had a love for education and always knew the importance of education. Hence, I end up marrying a scientist. Hey, no one saw that coming. And seven years ago, me and her have son. Um, we have five children that live with us together. And let me tell you something. It was one of the scariest moments of my life. And I'm not afraid of much. I've seen it all. But when God gets your attention and said, <laughs> what are you going to do? Will you still serve me? And 38% of my son's brain was removed. The same year I got nominated for a Grammy with Morgan Heritage. And my wife said to me, what are we going to do? First thing I only thing I do was to pray. Because fear came upon me. But I'm thankful for the the, the power and the acknowledgement of education because it was my wife's education at Vanderbilt University in Nashville, Tennessee, and our experience at Georgetown. And she would tell you that God they might be about some things. And she jumped into action, not as a scientist, but as a mother. And what would you do when a doctor looks at you and says, We have to cut out 38% of your son's brain? to save his life. And when I was growing up, I only know Ganja women within the Rastafari because I really just suffering because I jam and smoke a chalice in Jamaica. How much Jamaica is not about it? And it was very confusing because people classify this plant as dope, as drugs. But most of the medicine we take anyway is drugs, isn't it? Or derived from a plant. And I see the same herb that I saw as a sacrament and people selling it and buying it and doing many things just for recreational use, I seen it save my son's life. I don't smoke marijuana, never have. It's very strange, I don't really have it. But I just never saw the need to smoke. I just always, when I pray and when I play music, I get so high. And that is the Margan family. I love us the Margan family. We don't smoke marijuana. But we understood and knew certain things about it. That Made you think, it made you think twice, it made you reevaluate what you saw on the news, on the local news. So, what I've seen and experienced with this plant in my life in the past seven years, I'm so grateful for this plant called cannabis. But what I've seen traveling the world, my wife, from places like Jerusalem and Israel, where she, you know, consulted for so many different countries, South Korea, Jamaica. St. Kitts and Nevis, my wife wrote the cannabis laws of St. Kitts and Nevis. And I realized that we have a work to do, that we have to share our story. Because there's so many mothers out there that see their kids going through things and cannabis can help. Right? Our son was having about 200 seizures a day. And we, didn't, we couldn't find answers. Only thing was prayer. And my wife jumped into action and said, Gramps, I'm going to make him something. I said, what are you going to make? Like, I'm not scientist, <laughs> you know? But she was in mind. And I'd like to introduce you guys to my amazing wife, 
um, that wrote this book, The Mighty Flower. Please welcome, for the first time, in Barbados, my wife, Dr. Annabelle.